We're up top now. We're going to get the layout done for our trusses because we've got a crane coming in the morning. We don't want to be doing this while we're paying the crane guy to sit there. We've done that before. It gets a little expensive and because this is a hip roof and it's designed by an engineer, it's not the simplest layout ever. It's kind of, you got to look at the plans. Let's put it that way. Something really weird about the layout on this house is that it starts at one foot from the corner of the building, actually on each end, and then it comes into the middle toward this firewall where it's an odd and even undefined number to end with. And I tell you what, I don't even care what the number is that we end up to there because it doesn't have any effect on any other thing. Each side comes from its own side and ends right there in, a, in an odd number. So I think it's gonna work out fine, but we're just pulling some numbers to confirm that the overall building size is what it's supposed to be because we're about 20 feet above where we started with our original layout. And guess what? Things can kind of get a little bit larger or smaller in that amount of distance. But actually I measured this wall and it's spot on. Another thing with these trusses is that it is very possible for you to damage the trusses or have the trusses fall over or collapse mid installation if you don't follow the instructions that are provided and we'll go over this a little more tomorrow while we're setting them this basically tells you all the ways to do this in a way that will not damage you or the trusses while you're putting them in ray's going to trim this board because we're cutting these that one was cut a little long and we don't want to jam one in and force these trusses up, which we could do that with one, one of these boards. That one might have went up a little bit. Okay. It is possible. It's possible. We're on the other side now, and the guys are just asking me if I'm going to lay it out. The thing is, you could just go measure what's over there. <laughs> Replicate it right here. Identical. These rooms are identical. All right, split the D. Yep. I'm going to slide it out so I can measure the remainder. I'm going to say leave an uh, inch and a quarter here. Something like that. My batteries don't matter. Somebody just went out there and just unplugged my and plugged their in. You. <laughs> what was plugged in there? What was his iPad? The Metabo. <laughs> I don't see your tools are more important hmm. than mine. I can see right there. Just thought it was charged. Arlo said he's got the whole roof system laid out and ready. How are you feeling about it? Good. Good. You really Real. feeling good? Yeah, I do. Yeah, it's like <laughs> great. <laughs> I'm feeling great. I got black chalk all over my face. Uh, <laughs> let me see. Well, uh, not too bad. I think, I think I got it off. Some of it. Those trusses? Baby trusses. I think it's technically a truss. It's got a truss plate on it. I mean, it looks like a truss. Definitely smells like a truss. Arlo was making a racket down here, so I came to see what he's doing. And he's packing out the side of our stairs with three, he's gonna cut one more, three solid stringers so that when our posts come down here, here, and here, Lexel, on my finger, they have solid wood under them to screw them down and attach everything really nice. We're here with Mike, yep. crane operator. Good yes, to meet sir. you. He's with uh, Tree Buster, Tree Experts. Is that yes, your sir. company? Yes, sir. Okay, he's going to go over a couple of uh, the crane signals right. so that we it, don't get our signal. This is cable up. Cable, cable up. This is cable yeah. down. Okay. Swing left, swing right. All right. Boom up. 
boom down. Okay. Now, That's Jamie all we need. made yeah, the yeah. mistake one time of giving a crane operator thumbs up, like, it's yeah, good. It's good. <laughs> and then he, it's good. And then the whole thing. Then he yanked the cru <laughs> truss out from under his right. feet. Not yeah. good. So, That's not good. Big mistake. Let's get rolling. All, all right. right. Let's do it. We're going to start on the uh, non BCO side. We've, we've labeled this house according to the direction to the local pub, BCO. BCO. <laughs> Is that way. Right. So we're going to start on non BCO okay. side. <laughs> hey, we need to check and see what end of the painted end of that truss we already put up is. Well, it's on the end. Here's the painted end right here on this one, so it might be on the other side. And if it is, we need to make sure. I'm going to hook the tagline on the end that stays with the crane here. So, whoever's got the tagline, don't pull on it too hard. If okay. they pull on it too hard, it's going to go and the hook will slide. Okay. So basically, no tension. I'm handling on the all. I'm handling all the weight. All I need is a driver. Okay. Roger that. I haven't used a metal hook like this before, but I think he's going to be able to unhook himself, which will be good, and we can definitely hook faster, but we're going to follow his direction of not pulling on this tagline. This is our first truss, and it's a girder truss, so Jamie's being smart and marking the layout of all these other pieces of truss that are going to land on the girder truss while it's sitting here on the ground. I'm also getting some spacer blocks screwed to the side of this truss here, so when our next one comes in, we got a positive registration, we can go ahead and tack them together. We're positioning this first truss and we're just gonna split the difference to make sure it's centered. Ray, we're about an eighth short of the outside of wall. Yeah, same here. Same there, okay. okay. All right, let's, let's screw it. We're gonna fasten with GRK structural screws so that if we have to move something or adjust something, it's not nailed, it's screwed and we can unscrew it. We're good if you wanna unhook. Rub coming down. You look like a real construction guy today. I feel like an idiot. <laughs> We've got our third truss coming in here and you can see how this is gonna work. They're just gonna stack up taller and taller till we get to here. And also this crazy triangle piece is gonna lay across to the ridge here. And then we've got these little guys going out here. It looks confusing when they're all laying on the ground because you can't tell what's going on, but it's all making sense now. Yeah, when I saw all the pieces on the ground, I was like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> but now, now I see it. We went ahead and plumbed this truss and got a diagonal brace down to some wall framing there. So that as we go up, everything's sort of locked together and not gonna move around on us. This is our first truss that has a big opening in it. So we have some attic space for mechanical stuff to go. I believe we need that space to put like an air handler. It was specially designed. It was specially designed. So this one and I believe the next one are gonna have this big opening to give a little attic. You can see how these blocks are working, 22 and a half spacing. And we cut them a fuzz less, like 22 and a half like seven sixteenths. So that works well. They do make these metal brackets you can just slap on from the top. They cost like, they cost a lot. They cost too much. Yeah, they're like a couple bucks each and you're using like hundred of them. It might cost like 400 bucks. So that works well. What's been extra sketchy this morning is that all the top of these wall plates we're having to scamper around on are covered in ice. And that's making it extra scary. Well, that side's melted. We should have done that side. I don't know. Well, we're done now, so we survived. That's good. This video is brought to you by Element, and it's a tasty electrolyte drink mix that I love with everything you need and nothing you don't. And no joke, I keep a box of Element in my truck at all times. Element contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio, 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium, and no sugar. So you get a great tasting drink mix that hydrates you and not a bunch of sugar that's terrible for you like a lot of other drink mixes. If you didn't know, electrolytes facilitate hundreds of body functions, including the conduction of nerve impulses, hormone regulation, nutrient absorption, and fluid balance. And it just makes you feel a lot better oh when you're properly hydrated. Not this time. 
time. Element can even help prevent and eliminate headaches, muscle Ooh. cramps, fatigue, sleeplessness, and other common symptoms of electrolyte deficiency. You guys know I try to live an active lifestyle, and that's why it's so important to replenish those electrolytes after I've been working or working out. Awesome. An Element has tons of great flavors, and my favorite is the watermelon salt, if you're wondering. And it's used by everyone from NBA to NFL to NHL players, even Olympic athletes. Right now, Element is offering my listeners a free sample pack with any order that's eight single serving packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors or share Element with a salty friend. Make sure to get yours at drinkelement.com slash Perkins. And remember, it's only available through my link. That's D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash Perkins. Thanks to Element for sponsoring our video. Let's get back to work. What did you just do, Ray? Well, you know how it's hard to get your screws out of your pouch when you got gloves on? It is. Well, I took a magnet out of the back of this. Okay. And uh, stuck it in the tip of my glove. And now you just stick your finger in. I just in. stick my finger in. And uh, I got a magnet. <laughs> That's pretty genius. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving to the other side, BCO side. We've got all this bracing in the way for our marriage wall that had to withstand a big storm. So that's got to go real quick. We're starting on the south side, side number two with our girder truss. And that only took us maybe 30 or 40 minutes with the crane to set that other side. So that's, that's the good thing about it is we'll be done with an hour or so of crane time total I think. The crane guy does have a four hour minimum though so even if we're only craning for one hour he's got to charge us for four and that's fair he's got to drive out here and set up and waste half his day so it'll still be a good deal. I just told the homeowner I'm not sure if these are the right trusses just to gauge her reaction you know okay. it's a little <laughs> test that we do to see it's a jerk know, test to see how stable they are kind of <laughs> mentally she did great though she just kind of laughed it off and then I told her I wasn't kidding. <laughs> Jason's removing a little of this sheathing since it sticks out an inch from the wall. We stuck it out up just a little too far and it's holding some of the truss tails up. Well, he's not chiseling it. He's just bashing it with a claw of his hammer. <laughs> well, it's too close to the edge. It couldn't reach my I think your hat might be flipped around there, bro. What? <laughs> Look at your hat. What? That's how the boys do it nowadays. You wear that crap back. We do have these on layout in the place that we think is correct. Now, if I move this left and right the tiniest bit, it actually changes whether it's in plane in this direction. So we have that as a variable. We can adjust them slightly to uh, accommodate this one truss that's gonna lay flat and hopefully connect yeah. at every corner here and be connected to each one. And there's only a certain amount that's allowable, right? Like there we is. can't just lean it way over. It's a formula of the percentage of the height of the truss that it can be leaned over by a certain amount. We're coming up with this guy and it's gonna lay flat across the tops of these like we were talking about, and that's why it looks like it's the wrong pitch truss it is. So we've never really done one exactly like this. We're gonna see if it works. Ray, I think we could use another man there to catch the bottom. Yeah, and then if you'll just catch the top and align it flat in there. All right, I got a hand on it. So push it towards the center of the house. got the bottom locked in and he's just tipping it down. I'm watching this hook though. It's kind of hooked the wrong way. Well, I think it's good though. I think it's, 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 it's working. Trying to align right here. This tip needs to be aligned with that point, and also some alignment needs to happen at both these corners. So we're trying to just split the D, we call it, to where everything is pretty good. Yeah, I think we're done. You can send him on if he wants to go. Okay. I think we're good with him. Oh yeah. Thank you, Mike. I'm Mike. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Looks good. Doesn't look like we did anything from down here, does it? No, not from down here. I can't see a whole lot. <laughs> All I can see was the ends. <laughs> we got up there when you got towards the center. I could see where my hook was. Nice. 
Mike's giving us a little show and tell of some other crane job he did. Uh, was that you right there? That's me. I, had, I, owned, <laughs> I did own two cranes. I still do. One of them <laughs> tore up there. Go back to that other picture. <laughs> wow. That, that one that's up in the woods where the How did that happen? Down, uh, oh, really? Ground gave out underneath the outrigger. Really? Yeah. Were you on the on it? At no, the time? but a man was. Yeah. Was he okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He Thank God. The, he was no, he no was crane ball, operators right? were hurt in no the making crane operators of were this hurt video. Or the man riding the hook. We just took a little water break. Now we're going to get back to it. We're setting these little baby trusses that we don't need the crane for, and they just extend the plane on out here. And then we'll have one hip that goes from over here across the corner. We're having to put a few of these little baby trusses just off layout so that they line up in plane on the top surface. And we're just using our big stick level to use as a straight edge and make sure all the tops line up and really all the bottoms need to for the ceiling surface. That's what's really important here is that flush on top, flush on bottom. If we gotta get off on layout, we can deal with that cutting our sheet goods. I mentioned this in one other video, but I think it's really interesting. Since this is a duplex, the roof system is really two separate roofs that are just sandwiched together and look like one roof. This side has no trusses that bear on any walls on this unit and vice versa, so that if one of these units was to catch on fire and burn down, the roof system on the other would remain intact and not fall down, so that's pretty smart. That's a wrap on the trusses. They're all installed. Jason's gonna tell you which one was the hardest. That one. <laughs> it seems crazy. We almost called Jono up here to help us. There's already three of us here to yeah. try to hold it, level it, square it, shoot it. Yeah. And it just, it's so small that it just moves every time you touch it. So. Yeah, it wasn't fun. It took us as long to do these two little ones that did all the other ones. <laughs> but they're in. They're in, that's right. What's up? What's going on? Oh, just driving. <laughs> Why are you here so early? Kids had to be at school early. Uh, Wife's out of town. What about you? Oh, you know, dropping off nine kids and trying to do some work. All right. Yahoo! What's Am I up? on time or what? I leave my house at 8.28 to get here at 8.30. Do you know that? No stop signs, no red lights. It's just down the hill. I barely have to push the gas. I know you don't use the brakes because you don't have any. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm kind of getting spoiled. I'm afraid when we work somewhere else, it's going to be tough. We are back on site this morning, and we're all staring at the overhang that goes around all four sides of the structure. There's nothing left to do at this point besides get up on the scaffolding and start knocking out one side at a time, fascia board, first row of sheathing, and figure out what other kind of blocking we need to do to make it all happen. I'm headed up top with Jason. We're gonna sight each plane of this roof across the top to make sure all the tops of the trusses flush out. And if there's any humps, Jason's gonna plane them with the uh, power planer. And I'm gonna be his eyes and tell him like, take a little here, a little there, move up, move down. And I think we can get this thing really flat before we put the sheathing on, if it's not already. Ladders are on the other side. Duplex. Dude, can we just cut a hole right here through this wall? And no. <laughs> Right there where your planer is and down, that one needs to go down a little. And then the next one down, the little hip one, the top of it, yep, needs to go down oh, just a little bit too. Just go a couple feet in and fade it, yeah. Ah! 